Okay, let's look at secret sharing uh, using Chinese remainder theory. With perfect secret sharing, what we have is we have a trusted uh, dealer who will split a secret into a number of shares. So in this case, Bob, Trent, Eve and Alice each have a share. In an all or nothing scheme, then none of the shares can reveal uh, the secret. And we need all of the shares back together again to be able to uh, recover the secret. And it's perfect in terms of that we need all of the shares together. In a more resilient form, we can actually define a threshold the T and a number of uh, shares as N. And then we can define an any t from n and where t defines the threshold so we might have an any three from four so that bob eve and alice can come together and recover the share for example trent may have lost his share or we may define a policy where any of the three of them can come together and share the secret back again Again, it's perfect in terms that if we have less than T, we cannot recover the shear. The first method that was, uh, that was created was known as the Shamir secret share method uh, created by Audi Shamir from RSA fame. With this, what we do is that we define uh, uh, a curve or a linear equation and uh, so that we can hide a value. So in this case it's a simple sharing scheme where we have uh, two uh, shares and we need to regenerate a secret. So what we can do is that we can define our secret, in this case it's four, and then we can define a linear equation and give Bob and Alice a point on the curve. So in this case, Bob would have this point and Alice would have this point here. It is impossible for them to be able to discover the gradient and thus the point at which it cuts the y-axis unless they can bring the two shears back together again. We can extend this on for an any two from three. So we can now give Carol another point on the curve, on the on the, the straight line and then any of the two can come back together and to be able to create uh, the secrets. We can then get more complex curves such as for an any three from four. In this case we create a quadratic equation of this type of form and where we have a secret uh, value of three here. And then we will give Bob, Carol, Dave and Alice points on, on the curve. So because of the way that the equations work with a quadratic equation, we need at least three points to come together to be able to uh, recover the, uh, the values of A, B and C within the quadratic equation. And then if we need more complex schemes, we can obviously create higher levels of our polynomial uh, values. Okay, so this is an example here. Uh, we have a secret of 10. Then this is our polynomial or our quadratic equation. And we can define that here with, uh, with Python and then print uh, that out. So that gives us this, this equation here. Our secret is 10 in this case, and we'll generate some random A and B values uh, for our quadratic equation. Then uh, we'll take x equal to one, x equal to two, three, and four, and then distribute these as shares. Then we bring back these three points and do a poly fit with a numpy and we should be able to get the result back again and this gives us three values for a b and c 
and the last value uh, will give us the secret, as we can see here. Okay, so there are other methods though for perfect secret sharing, and one method uses Chinese remainder theorem. With this, uh, we solve with uh, Chinese remainder theorem if we have something like this. What is the value of x when divided by 51, the remainder is 45. When divided by 14, the uh, remainder is 14. And then, uh, sorry, that should be 41. And then when we divide the value by 13, the remainder is 5. So Chinese remainder theory allows us to be able to solve for the value of x. So here's a simple Python program here. In this case, we have the mod, which is this part, and then the remainder is this part. So this is 51, 41, and 13. And we have 45, 14, and 5 for our remainders. We put it into our Chinese remainder theorem uh, solver coming in from this library. And then hopefully we'll be able to print out what uh, the value actually is. In this case, it's 96. So that 96 when divided by 51 will give us something with a remainder of 45. In this case, we can actually solve uh, this value. And here's an example here where we have a, a large x value. We'll take a mod of 100, 100, 103 find those values, and then we'll get the solution back as that value there. So we have a quick look at this. Okay, so let's take a value of, say, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then we'll do a mod of 100, 101, 103. Uh, these values should not have any shared fact between them. Okay, so the answer's here, 21, 84, and 40. And it's reverse that back to find out our original uh, value then for our solution. Okay, so this is Chinese remainder theory. Let's see how we can use this in terms of our secret shares. The first method that we have is the as as Muth Bloom as Muth Bloom method. For this, uh, we'll just ignore this bit here just now. We create a, a number of of shares uh, using our secret S a random value called alpha, and then a prime number, m0. And then we generate other prime numbers. Uh, they don't have to be prime numbers, but they need to be co-prime. But if we make them all prime, then it will work for us. So for the number of shares that, that we require, we'll create a number of prime numbers, in this case, four. And then what we do is that we take each of the shares, that's the share plus alpha times this m0 value, and then we take it mod of m1, of m2, and m3. So in this case, we're taking these three values in here. And it won't be possible to determine the value of S, even though we know uh, M0. But what we do is that uh, we use Chinese remainder theorem to work out what this value is here. So given these values and the values of the shares, and the values of the shares, we should be able to work out what that value is, and that's it there. From there, it's fairly simple. If we know m0, uh, that we take the mod of this result, 
and it should bring us back to a value of s. If we look at the code for this, so this is the this is what we need to do in terms of making sure that uh, we have our values of up of our threshold that are over. So in this this is a multiplication. So we take uh, the m1 times m2 up to the threshold value. So this is this uh, here. If we're going to do an any 3 from 4, we take uh, 3 shares uh, here, starting from uh, M1. And we need to make sure that that's uh, greater than M0 times, in this case, the last 2 shares. We also order the shares in terms of their size. So M0 becomes the smallest, M4 becomes the largest. We then go round this loop here until we find uh, M4 in this case to make this uh, true. Once we have that, in this case, we should only be able to do uh, use three shares to recover. And if we try to use two shares, then it won't actually work. So here's a here's a, a solution here. We can see that our shares themselves are these values plus the prime number that we've used for each one. And then we should be able to recover our secret with three shares, but with two shares it's not possible. So we'll just have a quick look at what the code looks like here. So we'll try a secret of 100. And we can see we've recovered it if we have three shares. But we don't get the correct answer if we only use two shares. So the code we've used is this here. And just at the bottom here, we're recovering back the shares to be able to get the, the answer. So we just open up the code here. Okay, so generating the prime numbers, we're making sure that uh, this is correct for our value of M4. And then we go through and, and do, do our sharing. This is the CRT, uh, Chinese Remainder Theorem, uh, here for the recovery. And there's the mod of M0. M0 can be made public or... It, it can be kept secret and it's only for the entity who's rebuilding the secrets back again. But revealing M0 doesn't actually reveal anything about the secret share. Another uh, method is this method here. And in this method here, again, we make sure that uh, that this case is is uh, is true, and as a generalization, if we have a, a threshold of three and four shares, we make sure that m two times m three is less than m zero times m one times m two. So this will make sure that if we only have two shares, then uh, our sharing our secret will not be recovered. And then simply, uh, we just uh, use uh, our shares, in this case, as the mod of each of the M values. So here we are for our shares here. So we generate uh, four shares, in this case N is four, and we can see there we're taking the mod of each one. But we don't actually need to remember uh, these. Well, we we store the, the values with the shares. And then when we recover, we can recover them uh, straight off using the shares 
and the M values that we've created. You can see here that we recover our share. In this case, it's five. And then when we only use two, we can see here that we don't get the correct answer. Okay, so if we try this code out, so we'll try with got a large value here. And we can see here that we recover our shares here. And because we're generating new prime numbers, we get uh, different values for our shares each time for that. Okay, so an important thing is that if we only use two, two of those shares, we do not get the right answer. And that's because of uh, this part here, which is making sure that uh, these, uh, these, this condition is true. Okay, so that's been an introduction to secret sharing and Chinese remainder theory.